Alrighty, here we go. Why she stopped the car at the place where we always waited for Mion? Come think of it, I've never been to Mion's house before. I've only heard that it's right down this road. Apologies for a second, I must take some coffee. And I know I just drank some, but you know. なんとか資格をついて突入できる位置に若いのが何人か待機してます。試行性マイクで中を伺ってますから、お二人が大きな悲鳴を上げてくだされば、すぐにわかりますよ。絶対に説得しますから、自首を認めてくださいね。Bus determination. Um, I think I should probably turn the volume up a little bit. Kuregure mo chui shite kudasai. Ima sara shinji nai de shou ga. Dekiru koto nara. あなたたちに犠牲になってほしくないんですから。本当に今更だな。With that thrilled response, we left the car. The clinging humility and the voices of cicadas greeted us. I'd never has, have expected this would be happening today. Rana took the lead and began to walk. Down the road I'd never been. Rana,日本の家には行ったことがあるんだよな。うん、何度もあるよ。とても大きな家でね。お庭なんか山が丸ごと入るくらいあるんだよ。松茸が採れるとかなんとかでいつも浅くがしてあるんだけどね。Big enough to fit a mountain. That was amazing. One of the three families controlling Hinamizawa, and the head family of the Sonosaki clan. Perhaps there was something to be said about its magnitude. The bath continued. Um, let me just, by the way, put myself a little bit smaller here. The path continued onward, level and uneven, eventful. There were metal fences along its edges, and beyond them were woods with trees growing thickly. The fences were high. The tops of them bent inwards, sticking out like sharp spears. Plus, there was dangerous looking barbed wire wrapping them. No one could look at them and not feel intimidated. In addition, there were signposts hung up here and there along the fence. Private property of the Sonosaki family, entrance forbidden. Beware of venomous snakes. Active security cameras. 
Insurers will be charged an entry fee of 1 million yen. この森。いや、山か。丸々庭なのか。庭というか、領地だね。見ての通り私有地ではあるけど、手入れも何もしてないから。散策ができるような気持ちいい森というわけでもないし。she could say that again. It really did feel like a neglected savage woodland. It was dark and damp, and certainly not a forest that made you want to go for a nice walk. Maybe that's just what happens when a landowner has too much land. Like Oishi-san Oishi said, there were security cameras hung up all, hung up all over the place. Though they have been weathered by wind and rain, casting doubt as to whether they were even functional. Mio,あれを通して見てるんだろうか。見てないと思うな。だってみーちゃんの家は基本的におばあちゃんとみーちゃん本人の二人しか住んでないんだもの。カメラを見張ってる人がいないし。what a useless security system. That's right. Mian's father. He was a big shot Yakuza, wasn't he? Rana smoothly danced around the answer as she explained. At last, a huge gate as big as I'd imagined appeared. Was she living by herself with her grandmother in a house with such a grand gateway? Beep. The old buzzer made a dull sound. Was it got off in the middle or middle and not getting to the house? We waited long long enough without a response for me to start thinking like that. However, we finally heard footsteps walking through the gravel on the other side of the gate. I nervously balled my hands, my palms now sweating, arm spaghetti, mom spaghetti. Um <laughs> Bomb sweating, mom spaghetti, arms heavy. Um, yeah, I don't know how that song even goes. My palms are now sweating in the fists. Um, there was a clang of a bolt being released and the gate opened slightly. The person picking out the gap was none other than Mion. <laughs> Mion didn't seem all that surprised that visitors are arriving in the morning, which wasn't a normal time. In fact, she se almost seemed relaxed, as if she knew we were coming beforehand. Mion hype? Yeah. Mion smiled slightly in the way that the Mion we knew always did. She gestured for us to follow her. I hesitated for a moment looking at Rena. Oh, it's so peaceful. Like friends meeting another friend. Because that's certainly the only thing that's going on, so... Rena smiled cheerfully as if she, as if we, she were passing through a gate, the gate of good friend's house, and then did just that. I rally myself and then go through the gate too. On the other side, it hadn't been maintained very well, but it was clear that the 
lot was magnificently wide. It wasn't quite what you'd think when you hear when you hear a mansion, but it was cl very clearly a vast place. ケイちゃんはうちに来るの初めてだったっけ。あ、ああ。でけい家じゃねえか。今時合唱作りなんて流行らないよ。観光資源にはなるかもしれないけどね。私は早くごくごく平均的な鉄筋コンクリートに建て
I couldn't help but laugh at the silly contrivance. My laughter naturally spread to the other two. Hey, hi. Welcome, Rudok. Tereve. Yeah, sound novel. That's an apt description for Higurashi, so... Yeah, I would say that that's rather accurate. Inside of the house wasn't very bright at all. It was dimly lit, in fact, but mysteriously I could still feel an elegance to the place. Mion seemed to want a more modern building, but traditional houses, houses like this aren't bad either. <laughs> スキマ風は入るし、冬場は寒いし。人の家を勝手に文化財にして改築を妨害しないでもらいたいね。一番の理想はケイちゃんの家でしょ。あれは羨ましいよな。冬場は暖かそうだし。スマグミオン。あ、
beautiful looking picture. Winter pictures are always so freaking beautiful. I really like winter. Although, like, I, I, I really like how winter looks, even though I, well, actually, I'm kind of adverse to cold, but I'm also adverse to hot, so, or extreme weather anyways. Even now it's too warm for me, and it's only plus 20 degrees, so. But man, that looks absolutely beautiful. Thanks for posting that pic, that looks really cool. <laughs> Literally really cool. <laughs> hey, horrible puns aside. Let us continue. ね、きっと楽しいんだよ。冬の部活も I see the terror of our club cared not for the reasons, not for the season. The winter would be decided by who could best adapt to winter on the events. ゆきが降ってんだから、ネットのお部屋でテーブルゲームで遊べばいいじゃないかよ。あ、ケイチ君、そんなこと言ってると冬場はいっぱい負けちゃうかもね。ケイチ君、罰ゲームいっぱいで
we remained silent, hoping that someone else would speak up first. That was, however, the one thing we didn't want to do, and so we sat for a long time. At last, Mion sc smiled scornfully and opened her mouth to speak. Then and I exchanged glances, and we both resigned ourselves. Then I opened her mouth to speak first, so I stopped her. <sighs> delicious, delicious coffee. <laughs> what a casual joke. What a funny joke. Afterwards, I thought her mean remarks were Mion's own way of showing consideration. Mion had said those mean things in totally normal voice, and it drained the tension from my shoulders. Mion pretended that she didn't know what I was talking about, but I'd clearly gotten my point across. I could see Mion's expression immediately become harder. <sighs> we Well, that just spoiled all of it. An interesting choice of words, I must say. To display my deepest sincerity, I pressed my forehead to the table. Ah, this is the... Don't... Yeah. I can't remember the name of when you how, what what the action actually means. So, oh well. I meant it as as of a way of as my way of prostrating myself. I figured I, it wouldn't feel sincere enough if I raised my head right away, so I left it there on the table for a while. Mion didn't say anything. With my face down, I couldn't tell what sort of expression Mion had. Only the voices of cicadas filled the room. Mixed with them, I could hear the sound of the clock ticking. That was all. When I started to struggle to breathe from having my head down for so long, Mion told me to stop. I looked up to see that Mion's face was calm, but she was smiling faintly. Okay, and now I'll get some more coffee.
Things are escalating finally. Ooh. Things are escalating rather a lot. <laughs> I could feel pitiful tears welling up within me. If I had done this sooner, maybe nothing terrible would have happened. Mion spoke like it was someone else's problem, and I wasn't happy about it. Predictions how this will end. Um, I can't remember how the actual anime ended, so I have very little idea how this will end. Probably... The week will find where Shion is. Whether she's alive or not. I, I I do remember that she was captured or something like that. So yeah. But that's about all of the predictions I have. So don't ask me for predictions. I have none. Rana was giving her tip for that, and for, so the room's atmosphere quickly began to grow sharper. She was right. Even though I came here to speak from the heart like this, it's like it felt it felt like she hasn't been taking this seriously. Obviously, Rena isn't fond of that. I had known it would turn out like this from the beginning. Hadn't I come here prepared for that? I mustered my willpower and bit my lip. Mio. <laughs> Mia was trying to keep from showing any reaction, but I didn't miss her eyelid twitching just a little bit. どうしてそう思う? <laughs> 
Me and put a finger to her forehead and acted like she was thinking. そして流しの下にある<笑> Mion scratched her head. I heard her ever so faintly click her tongue. It was as though we found out she'd purpose to give a too little change cha change to our servant. That's all I could feel from her. So she Oh right. So now hesitated for a moment. I could tell that she didn't want to use the word raised and that she was struggling to find another word. So リカちゃんがみーちゃんの家に行くことをさとこちゃんに言い残していたのはお子さんだったんじゃないかなそしてさとこちゃんはみーちゃんの家に電話をしたうちのリカがお邪魔してませんことうんきっとこんな感じ似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似てる似
まさか冷蔵庫の中身だけで電話の内容まで見破るとは<笑>参ったな参った参った<笑>ミオングリファイアドフェドムラフタラ。イトモスシームライクミオンハトロスタデテクティブパニシメントゲームフォーテクラボーサムティングアンヘアパニシメントハトビンデサイデッ。オーハウファンダトラビンイフトゥーツ
But if, uh, but it was the first the question everyone wanted to know right now. Why would you do this? Why would someone do this? Oh, the humanity! That was what I wanted to ask as well. Why would you do this? That didn't only didn't only go for Rikachan and Satoko. It went for the mayor Takano-san and Tomitake-san as well. No, even further back, for all the incidents that had been occurring every year. For a little while, Mion couldn't respond. Right when we realized that the question was too vague and tried to put it into more concrete terms, she finally opened her mouth to speak. Here is on why. Here is reason why Mion killed Rika and Satoko. Um, they knew too much. Um, I'm gonna go with the fact that they it they were going to be punished because they wanted to punish um uh, um Keiichi. So that's kind of the reason. That's probably the best reason. So to punish Keiichi, they punished Rika and Ch Satoko. That's the only reason I can see why. Don't know if I'm right or not. She spoke clearly. She spoke with a clarity that a grandmother might use when telling, telling a story from a long time ago. Rena nodded lightly, then shot me a glance, asking me if I did. I returned her a nod. Hinamisawa was once called Onifa Onigafuji village, yes. I heard all about it that night from Takano-san in the ritual storehouse. They firmly believed that demon blood ran through their veins and cut off all contact with the outside world. They were worshipped by those in the villages at the foot of the mountains and treated the transcendents, those capable of magic. Treated like transcendents, those capable of magic. そうです。鬼が淵村の御先祖様たちは鬼の血を引く誇り高き仙人たちでした。麓の村々の人たちは崇め、そして敬いました。ですが、そういう空気も徳川の世が終わるとともに廃れていきました。The black ships arrived. The era of the samurai ended, the era of the national isolation ended, and the tradition of worshipping Onigafuchi village quickly disappeared. Those things that linger from the past were all to be detested. That was the kind of era it became. The abolition of food, feudal domains, and the establishment of prefectures. An era had begun, seeing Japan sprinting up the stairs that were beyond their means to try and reach the same level, level as the re of the rest of the world. Excuse me for a second, I must check a thing. All things in the western style were to be extolled, while old traditional things were to be scorned. That was the sort of era it was. At last, Japan, provoked by the great European powers colonizing 
Countries in Asia, one by one, began a policy to increase its wealth and military power so that it could stand as a global power in its own right. Conscription began and they won war after war. The first Sino-Japanese War and the Russo-Japanese War and until the Pacific War broke out, they recklessly climbed the staircase towards modernization. かつて Thus began harsh days where one harsh days where one would suffer unreasonable discrimination just because people knew one was from Onigafuchi. The children in the village in the village at the foot of the mountain were thought not to go near Hinamisawa because filthy germs were rampant there. Children who had come into contact with children in Hinamisawa would cry and wail as their parents purified the spot they were touched by rubbing salt on it. One of the adults said to the children that if you got lost in Hinamizawa, you would be kidnapped by demons, cut up into pieces and devoured. Never ever go near the terrifying village of the man-eating demons. That's what he thought them. Taught them. Another said that during a famine long time long ago, the people of Hinamizawa gathered up all the corpses they discarded into the dry river beds and then cooked and ate them in order to survive. Groundless stories but said in such seriousness. Baseless slander added to baseless slander, making Onikafuji villages historically accurate, thrilling history all the more believable. Perhaps the chain of undue discrimination was a manifestation of the people's anxiety towards the uncertain times. Of course, the story didn't. Un, uh, un... Oh, I forgot to breathe. The story didn't end only with the perspective of children. If anyone find out you were from Onigafuji, you would be turned down from any job you applied for. People would even go back on engagements and marriage proposals. As for the marriages where one partner had lied about it, as soon as the truth got out, they were made to divorce. Saiba,もおこしました。出身の問題は離婚する重要な理由にはなり得ないと訴えた。でも敗訴しました。出身の距離は結婚の上での重大な差傷行為にあたるのだそうです。Huh. This is rather interesting. ひどいね。そんなの。Yeah. I've heard about such discrimination towards those in small villages in civics class. Just because... Just because others knew you were from a tiny hamlet, you would be subjected to every societal disadvantage there was a modern form of bullying. Though I only memorized that because it was going, on, going to be tested on, on a test one time. I recall being suspicious about it, and unable to believe such discrimination occurred in modern Japan. まあ、自業自得と言えないこともないのかもしれません。私たちのご先祖様は自分たちに鬼の血が流れていることを誇りに思い、自慢し、麓の人々を蔑んで暮らしてきたのです。その神秘性で麓の村人たちを怖がらせ
当時をよく覚えている祖母はそれは苦しい時代だったと回想しています。Even that bitterly long war, however, finally ended in 1945. Tasu no Otokode o s i n a t a Hinamizawa ni mo, Yoyaku Chichia o t o Musco Tatiga Modote m a i a s h t a Mochiron, Kaira no Mono Mo Okata. Soredemo, Otokode Ganaku, Mura o Ijisuru Kotonisura, Genkai o Kitaste ita Hinamizawa ni to. それはとても喜ばしいことでした。マカーソル・ GHQ set to work on drastically improving mindsets and strove for the abolition of unfair discrimination. They could feel day breaking on the dismal night that was the previous era. ハイソン寸前だったヒナミザワをもう一度立て直そう。そういう機運が高まり、村人たちは村を少しでも豊かにするために働き始めました。During that time, someone appeared who built, a, built up a fortune through a vast number of dealings in the black market. That, one's Mion, that was Mion's grandfather, the husband of the elderly current family leader, Sohei Zonozaki. Sohei was a Chung of Tai Dik in the city, and he was a Chung of Tai Dik in the city, and he was a Chung of Tai Dik. それを瀬戸内海某所に隠し闇市で高値で売りさばいて大きな富を得たのです。そうへい、そうへい、ディンスペンタフォーチュンフォーヒスオンプレジャーイーダー。イエントラストテンタイラマウントヒスワイフ、ヘッドオフテゼノサキハウス。されたひなみざわを復興させよう。村人すべては家族であり、この富は共有の財産である。現当主である祖母はそう宣言しました。この大きな富は、その後のひなみざわの復興の大きな力となったのです。I see。With that, ひなみざわ came back to life, and that's how the Sonozaki family had established its current prosperity. Mochiro, Yamichi de Zayo Nasta Koto, Netamu Hitotachimo, Oze Mastaga, Mo Murabito a Kinishinakata. They succeeded at one business venture after another. Those who had succeeded freely supported those who followed them. Giant family of Hinamizawa, tied together with strong bonds, kept expanding its influence. The Zonosaki family, the center of everything, would be extolled for a long time as the minds behind Hinamizawa's re 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 revitalization. Sono Katsuyaku no Chushin Jimbutsuga, Mija no Baja Nandane. Sugo yo me. Daikatsu. Mion looked like she was honestly happy Rena had praised her. Canned flesh. It sounded so hideous that just hearing it made me nauseous. So, who? So, no, Zaki, so, hey, no, Joe, can that that on another water coma, Coco Hakus Tanodis. Kare no chotas ista kanzume wa Jitsu wa shokuzai o mochita mono dewa nakatta no da Hinamizawa, a village in which demons lived and ate humans They were just about to wipe away that cursed stigma The light that they had finally started to see in their peaceful lives grew hazy and disappeared The shocking truth, as revealed by his former superior The stolen provisions from the old Japanese army that had been a huge cornerstone for Hinamizawa's revival had been canned human flesh. Why were the cans like that? Wasn't Sohei just a manager of a food, food warehouses? His superior revealed that Sohei did not have the job of managing the food. In reality, Sohei's dur job during the war had been to exterminate pestilent mice. And to transport the corpses of those with infectious diseases. 
it had been unfair treatment and all because of the low la lowliness of his origins. As a result though, he had returned safely without having been sent to the front lines or being detained. Perhaps that was the only fortunate thing to happen to him. Uh, let me do one more thing, like, real quick. Apologies. Apologies, real quick. I need to talk to my friend since he came on time. Finally, ah. Uh... Finally, so hey, List was enlisted as an assistant at the military and medical institution. There, however, he found something even worse than the low, scorned, depressing customs of Onigafuchi village in the research they were carrying out. Could that have been, well, you know, the bacteriological corp corpse in the old Japanese army or whatever? Keichikun, you've heard th that. What could it be? I was pretty sure it was Unit 731. It was Nightmare Unit that devoted itself to researching terrifying bacteriological weapons to break the deadlock in the war.
They used many innocent people as fodder for horrible human experiments. They methodical methodological method method methodically observed how many days a new strain would take to kill the victims. How many days it would be when injected. How many days it would be when swallowed. They dissected many people to find that out. Sometimes they wouldn't bother waiting until they were dead and dissected them while they were still alive. Okay. They would strap them into centrifuges while still alive and crush them in decompression chambers while still alive. When a live human decompresses, all the holes in their body get pushed out tobo outwards and their intestines get pushed out of their aims like snake winding out of it. I have a feeling I saw something like that in a on a documentary one time. That makes me sick. And they still hate Hinamizawa, huh? You said it. Mian agreed with me, giving a faint, sad smile. It wasn't much in a way of com in the way of communication, but for some reason I was happy to have it right now. Apologies once again. <laughs> The military is just uh, sorry about that. I, I'm communicating about the D&D with my friend, so yeah. The military designs at the start of the war completely fell apart, and a chronic food shortage broke out all over the battlefront. The food shortage led to mal malnutrition, and as their natural resistances lowered, the soldiers fell one to uh, fell to one disease after another. 
spirit and morale ro lowered as well, they wouldn't be able to maintain their forces at this rate. Apparently that's where the research where the research started. At first it was to find methods of delivering food to battlefields. It was very broad and included things from violent methods like stealing it from citizens to survival methods like how to cook unfamiliar insects and plant life. As they were contro- uh, As they were working out the details, they kept straying off course and go going out of control until they finally knocked down a door called Taboo. And with that, I will take a little bit of a break. <laughs> 